All right, guys. So if you just rolled over from the last video of me cutting this out, you know right where we're at. But um, if you don't, uh, go check out that video. Or um, I'll just catch you guys up to speed right now. Basically, I'm trying to build a welding, you know, fixturing table that can be like a repeatable jig that can be set up quickly. I've seen these like really big, expensive uh, fab tables, these huge blocks of, you know, steel uh, that are milled down and machined super flat. And uh, I'd love to have something like that, but I just don't have the money to do it right now. So um, what I do have is this plasma table, which can cut really, really straight. Um, along one axis right now and across the gantry I've got a wow of about a 30 second that I need to shim out so I'm gonna order some shims from McMaster's uh, somebody on YouTube was nice enough to share a link with me on a previous video of where I can get the right size shims for this project but even with that slight imperfection in the machine um, that's pretty damn straight for the stuff I do um, most of my tolerances are like plus or minus a 16th so I got an 8th and uh, a 30 second wow isn't really going to make any difference on the, the kind of stuff that I build to be honest with you. And my guess is that most of you guys um, are in a home shop or um, you know just similar to me, small and uh, trying to do the best with what you got. So um, I'm trying to make a super flat surface um, that I can use on a daily basis. So this is the theory is if I draw that top up to those inner supports that it will be as flat as the table, as my plasma table can cut straight. Um, so as long as I draw it up there tight iron, it should be dead nuts. Um, so what I did have to deal with is you see all this grinding going on here. Um, I didn't build any tolerance into those slots and tabs, which is a big no-no. I just, uh, the material was a little bit under a quarter inch and I designed it all for a quarter inch. I think I had like maybe two hundredths under a quarter inch and I thought well we'll see how those two hundredths under do and it was not nearly enough um, since this one I've already made another design that I'll share with you guys in a couple days here um, that I built in like a sixteenth of tolerance on the tabs and uh, I think about a total of uh, 0.125 which is an eighth so sixteenth on each side of the tabs hopefully this all makes sense to you guys but um, basically you just have to give it a little bit of wiggle room and then everything slides together. Uh, this one I did not give any of the wiggle room so it did not slide together. Uh, it was a lot of beating, a lot of grinding to get this whole thing to fit. So um, I know it's not perfect but this is the file I'm sharing because this is the file I have so far. I'm still learning um, how to design this uh, sheet metal stuff with the tabs and slots and you know within the tolerance of my machine really. So ultimately, I'd really like to develop this into a kit that can ship flat, UPS or freight. And uh, let me know what you guys think about this whole idea of a shippable, you know, welding table. And this is what we ended up with right here, guys. I think this looks pretty damn good, especially for a home brew operation. Um, I gotta say I'm happy with it. Got it all nice and tight here from the top. I show two foot dead nuts right there. Well, I grew a sixteenth right there. I should probably hook it back up and get that little gap out of there. Two foot oh. Two foot oh. So this way, I've got three foot and a sixteenth. Three foot and a thirty second, and pretty much three foot and a thirty second. So I grow just a hair this way, and I've got this little pucker right here I need to pull out. Um, and there's probably some of this in the middle here that's sitting up. And uh, I'll have to come up with a way of drawing that down. And I still need to go ahead and ream out all these holes. But before I do that, I'm going to order. Um, I'm going to order one of those special clamps that goes in here, and uh, make sure that I'm reaming it out to the right size. But yeah, so here's the. Uh, this is the maker block. That's what I'm going to call it. And I, I could uh, get this machine down. Uh, to be perfectly flat, there's a quarter inch here, 
uh, I know for sure I'm, I'm better than a quarter inch. There's plenty of material there um, to make this actually a machine surface if that's something I need to do in the future. This is actually the biggest thing I've uh, cut so far. So I'm curious to see how square it is. Hey, big dog, that is, that's unbelievable. That's really unbelievable. Um, I'm blown away here. This is, I mean, I don't know how you, I don't know how you get much better than that. It certainly wouldn't be better by hand. It puckers out right here a hair and uh, meets up finally again down here at the end of this square. So framing square. Looks pretty damn good. And you can see, here's what I got right there. So maybe a sixteenth over uh, just about two foot down this way and sixteen inches down that way. Uh, I can't help but be happy with this, you know, uh, about a sixteenth out of square. My slots and tabs didn't really work out all that well. Um, I mean, they worked out, but. They, uh, I had to do a lot of trimming and grinding and whatnot, and I think the remedy for that is to just build more tolerance into the design. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how to share it with everybody for free. Um, I will have it posted on my website if I can figure that out, and uh, hopefully it's up by the time this video gets posted. Um, I'll just have to make that happen. But um, So anybody that wants to build one of these tables, even if you don't have a plasma cutter, the idea is there's probably somebody local in your community that does have a plasma cutter. So um, this file, uh, you know, it's got some quirks. It's not perfect, but after about four hours of grinding and putting this thing together is what it ended up being, maybe three and a half. So basically for the cost of steel and the time on somebody else's plasma table, you guys could have your own. I, don't, I may end up cutting them out as kits. Um, I did design them under 150 pounds so they can ship um, in this two by three size. Uh, they can go FedEx or whatever. They don't have to be freighted. Um, so if you don't have a loading dock, like I don't, uh, you can still get one of these put together. I finally feel like I'm getting a, a good grasp on Fusion and Ventec and Inkscape and SheetCam, uh, which all kind of have their own little strong points and certain things they do really well or maybe just certain things that I know how to do well in each one of them. Now that I'm finally getting a grip on all of those design programs, it's a lot easier for me to uh, prototype stuff out here and get some files put together to share with you guys. Um, so make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more projects just like this. All right, talk to you later.